All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name's TJ. Welcome to Kayak USA, and thanks for clicking on the video today. So if you have been following my channel for a while, you know that I have a few different projects going on currently, or I did, I think we're basically finished with the old nitro here. But I've got a trailer build going on. It's an old truck bed trailer that I've picked up on Facebook Marketplace. I'm slowly converting it into a pull behind overland style camping trailer. It's a really fun build. If you don't know what I'm talking about, be sure to go check out my homepage and, and look up that playlist. It's a really fun build. I'm currently building it out still. I just finished filming next week's video on it. We got some really cool stuff going on with that thing right now. But another build that I've had while we've been doing that build, I kind of picked this one up and made a quick little series. I think there's maybe three videos in this nitro build, but I picked up this old 99 nitro bass boat it was in super rough shape, and I spent about three videos with you guys restoring this boat. We did the carpet, the seats, the gel coat. I even redid the trailer, new wires, lights, wheels, and everything for this thing. And since I finished this build, my wife and I have taken this boat out several times. I mean, we've had it finished now for about a month, I think, and we've taken this thing out just about any time it was nice weather, we've put this thing in the water and I'm trying to, you know, break it in, get it, you know, it's been sitting for years and years. I'm just trying to figure it out and learn it so that I can take this thing out and go fishing and not just spend my whole day trying to, you know, mess with the boat. So anyway, before this video, before I did this and before I started the trailer build with you guys, I actually filmed a, another video on my Hobie and I installed LiveScope. If you've been following, you remember that video where I showed you guys how I installed LiveScope. I broke down and I finally spent the money and overpaid. I, hate, I hated paying that much, but I really wanted the technology on my kayak. And I bought LiveScope and installed it on my Hobie. Well, since then, I have actually, you know, as soon as I finished restoring this nitro, I kind of transferred that live scope. And a lot of you guys have seen it, you know, on my channel already, but I've transferred my live scope set up to the nitro. Now, the goal is eventually to have it set up as kind of a compact portable unit so that I can go from bass boat to kayak to future project boat that I've already got in the backyard. So y'all make sure you subscribe for that build coming up but I wanna be able to move the live scope back and forth from boat to boat. But for now, I've been using it because I'm trying to still learn how to use it and I've been using it on the Nitro. And I'm not happy with it, to be honest with you guys. And that's what today's video is gonna be about. I've got, I've had an issue with it. And if you wanna skip through all of me talking, cause I'm fixing to explain how I got to this point and why I'm installing what I'm insp installing today with y'all. But if you wanna skip all this, I'll put the, uh, the timestamp right here. If you want to go straight to the install of what I'm installing today and skip all this talk and you can just go there, shame on you. You should stick around and listen to why I'm doing what I'm doing. Hopefully this video does help some of you guys out. If you're wanting to save the money to buy this live scope, like I've got the Garmin LVS 34, like I said, I think I paid like 1800 bucks for this transducer. And that's another reason that I, I, I haven't been happy with it, with the way that I've had it set up. And I hate you know, I was upset with myself because I spent so much money for this and I haven't been able to use it properly. Get, and that gets me to what we're doing today. But if you're thinking about getting this and you're looking into live scope and you're one of these late guys, because most people have it on their boat now. And if you're like me, you're one of these late guys that just haven't wanted to spend the money, hadn't wanted to add it to their boat, but you're thinking about it, maybe this video will help you out. So what I've done when I transferred live scope over to this nitro, it comes with the, uh, the trolling motor mount so that you could mount it to the side of your trolling motor or you mount it to the side of the shaft of your trolling motor. And it works great. I will say that it's really cool to be able to pull up on a, on a fishing spot and use your trolling motor to scan around with your live scope transducer to look for brush piles, to look for fish, you know, just to find cool places and mark them. And I've been doing that a lot. I've been finding brush piles lately and marking them on my my unit so that I know where to go back to to look for crappie or bass or whatever. That being said, if we rewind time just a little bit for the fishing community, before forward facing sonar come out, the biggest thing to hit our world was spot lock trolling motors. And that was just that we jumped from regular old school fishing to we can spot lock without a rope and an anchor anywhere we want using GPS to keep our boat exactly where we want it. 
and it's freaking awesome. And that technology came out and then forward facing sonar came out and now we're just basically out cheating on the water. I know there's a huge following of for it and there's also a huge following this against this live scope, but I'm not even gonna get into that on this video. But what I'm trying to get to is the Spotlock trolling motor, we use it all the time now because everybody who has a trolling motor on the front of their bass boat, odds are you've got a Spotlock and it's really cool to be able to hit a button, keep your boat in position while you're retining a lure or fighting a fish or whatever. And when you Spotlock though, your, your boat has to be held in position by the trolling motor, meaning the trolling motor is going to constantly move just a little bit, depending on current and wind, it could be moving a lot. And it's going to hold your boat in that position, but it does it by using the trolling motor to keep your boat still. It, I know a lot of you guys are like, duh, TJ, but some of these, you know, some of these people that are getting into this might not know it, so that's why I'm trying to explain this, this stuff that seems like common sense right now. But anyway, so the trolling motor moves around, and if you mount your graph, I mean not your graph, if you mount your transducer to your trolling motor like I had it, and a lot of guys still do, I got a cousin who loves his mounted right there to be able to scan and look for fish. But what happens is, is I found out that I didn't like it uh, because if I get up on a brush pile, let's say I find a big pile of crappie, you know, I'm sitting on top 10 feet in front of the boat, I've found this huge brush pile and I want to fish it, I see that it's loaded with crappie and I've done this, I'm using this as an example because this has happened to me last weekend, the weekend before last. And if there's a little bit of current or a little bit of wind, when you pull up on it, your boat is going to move. So you've got to constantly move your trolling motor to keep you above that pile of fish. And you know, the, the beam that you're shooting out to be able to see your lure and see that brush pile, it's only so wide. So if your boat shifts a little to the left or a little to the right, it moves you off. So you don't see your brush, brush pile anymore. You don't see your lure anymore. And when it shifts off, you have to use that trolling motor to find it. And then if you shift too far, you've got to actually use that trolling motor to get you back to it. Meaning that you got to spin the trolling motor to the left or the right, pull your boat back to it, and then start scanning and looking for it again. That's, that was a huge problem for me because it's been really windy here lately and I just couldn't use my live scope at all. Like I'd pull up on a spot, I'd sit down, I would aim it at it, I'd see the crappie, I'd throw in, I'd see my lure, and as soon as my lure would start dropping towards the crappie, the boat would start shifting and I would have to either grab the remote or use my foot pedal to chase you know, the view so that I could try to keep up with it. So it, it turns into this crazy multitasking thing that I wasn't happy with. Like I, I got to the point where I was just like, I just went back to regular fishing. I turned my graph off the other day because it, the wind, every time I'd sit down and try to fish for crappie, the wind would start blowing, I'd get frustrated. So I just ended up turning everything off and I just started flipping docks and I did catch a few bass, you know, just old school regular fishing. But like I said, I didn't want to spend that kind of money for this and not be able to use it. So anyway, I did what most of you guys have done or are doing. Maybe that's why you're watching this video today. And I got on YouTube and Google and started trying to figure out the best way to be able to manually mount a pole on the side of my boat so that I could keep the spot lock somewhere. Like if I want a spot lock and this wind is blowing and I got a brush pile in front of me, that this boat can do whatever it wants to do. And I've got a pole where I can just turn it and aim it at that trend, you know, not the trend. I can aim the transducer at the fish and my target and be able to fish it while the trolling motor is doing all this to keep me still. And I did a lot of research and I came up with this system right here. And this, by far, from what I've found now, and I've been researching for the past week trying to figure out the best thing to go with, and yes, before y'all start blowing the comments up, I know there's a ton of DIY ways to do this. I really didn't want to DIY it because I spent a lot of time trying to restore this boat and make it look good. I didn't want a bunch of PVC pipe hanging off the side of my boat. And I, by the time you buy all the stuff to do it yourself in aluminum, you could actually just purchase these really thought out nice units that are out there. And this one is made by a company called Sea Light. This is actually called the Seafish Transducer Mount 2.0. And I really liked seeing the word, the numbers 2.0 at the end of the name when I found this. And that's because when you see 2.0 at the end of a name of something, that means they come out with an original unit, they put it out into the world, everybody used it and started figuring out what they liked about it and what they didn't like about it then that company is able to take that data, 
make it better, and then release another version, call it the 2.0. So this is already better than the first version that was out there, and this thing is really cool. I'm gonna show it to you really quick. I'm gonna go over it. I did reach out to Sea Light. I got to talk actually with one of the owners of Sea Light, and he kind of, I told him what the problem I was having and what I was looking to do. I didn't wanna add a whole bunch of extra electronics up here. I wanted something that I could take on and off when I wanted to. So he kind of went over everything with me. I did tell him I was a YouTuber or influencer or whatever you want to call me. And he did give me a promo code. It is Kayak USA, all one word. So if you're watching this video and you decide to go with their product, you can actually use that promo code and save 10% off of this when you go there and buy it. So that was really cool of them. I, th I thought it was really cool also that they reached back out after I you know, reached out to them and they actually talked to me about their setup. But what this is, this is a pole mount system to go off the side of your boat. And I went with this system because my future plan, like I said earlier in the video, I wanna be able to take this from boat to boat. I wanna go from my kayak, if I wanna take my big boat out, I wanna be able to move it to this. My future project boats, I wanna be able to move it to that. And I can do that and simply leave this little plate. Before I show you everything else, I wanna show you how this actually mounts. They've got a few different ways that these actually mount to different boats, but this is the way that I went with. If you've got a boat that's got a T-Track system around it, like the trackers and stuff like that, that has it built in, they've got these systems set up where you don't even have to drill holes in your boat. You can utilize that T-Track system on your boat. So that's, that was really cool, but this is what I'm going with. And this is the only thing that's gonna be mounted to my boat. This is gonna bolt straight to my floor. And what's neat about this is I'll be able to purchase extra of these. I'll go on there and order me two more as I move this and figure out how I'm gonna go from boat to boat. So I can mount this on this boat. Then I can mount one over here on the H rail or the floor of my Hobie. I can mount one of these on my other boat, on the pontoon boat, whatever. And then anytime I wanna take my live scope with me on a different boat, I just grab it take it, stick it on there and hook it up and I'm good to go. I don't have to unbolt anything. I don't have to do any, anything crazy. And that's why, that's one of the reasons, excuse me, that I went with this company. So this is all that's gonna be bolted to my boat. Now this is where the magic happens. This thing right here is a stowable, very functional. I mean, you can kind of maneuver it however you want. And I'm gonna link one of their videos. They've got like a 60 second video it's like an AI video of how to install this. And you actually, when you buy it, you get this QR code that you can scan and it pulls up that video on YouTube and it shows you how this thing works. And it's really cool. When I saw the video, that's what made me contact them when I saw that video. But you just unscrew this knob right here. And once we get it mounted, you'll be able, I'm gonna take the camera closer to show you. But you got this knob and this pivot pole. So this pole is gonna mount to the side of your boat. And then this, as you can see, I don't have it tight right now. I'm doing it so I can show you how it's gonna work. So the pole that comes with, and this is all aluminum and uh, that boat board material, plastic, whatever you wanna call it, it's mainly made out of all aluminum. So you're not gonna have to worry about salt water or, or rusting of any kind like that. But the way it works is you got your pole here, your transducer is gonna mount at the bottom of the pole. It goes into this clamp and this clamp is, it pivots on a bunch of different angles and you can actually move this anywhere you want so that you can get it close to your seat where you can reach it. Or if you're one of these guys who likes to stand, you can actually mount it to where you stand and operate this. But when you travel, which is what I like, like if you want to switch spots back and forth on the river, you can actually flip this up and nothing's bolted together. So it's going to look like crap right now. You, but you flip this up and you can spin it around. I'm going to set this down. You spin the pole around on the boat and you stow it and lock it down like this and you just run down the river. Once you get everything locked down, you don't have to worry about any vibration or nothing. This locks down solid. You can travel down the highway. This is how it will be mounted when I leave my house to go to the water. It'll be mounted right here. And then when I get to the river, I can spin it out, get it hanging above the boat and lock it like, let's say I wanna run down the river really quick. I can lock it like this and have the pole just kind of propped up off the side of the boat like this and not even have to spin it around and you know get it in the way of anything. And then when I get to my fishing spot, I'll just go boop, just twist it right down into the water. I'm gonna show you this closer in a minute. I know this is, <laughs> this is not a really good explanation. I'm just trying to give you a, a taste of what this thing is gonna be able to do after I get it installed. And installation is gonna be super fast because it is literally four bolts. That's all I gotta do. You do the four bolts, 
I've already taken my LVS 34 off of my trolling motor. Thank God. I was so frustrated having this on my trolling motor. I got my cousin, like I said, Dylan, y'all saw him in last week's video or week, the, the Gunnersville camping trip when we fished with Norby. That was Dylan and he runs his transducer on his trolling motor and he loves it. Like he don't, he didn't want to get this pole. I think after he gets on my boat and uses this one, I think his mind might change, but we'll see how that goes. But you just mount it, you hook up your uh, forward facing sonar. Now I will say that if you are new to the forward facing sonar and you are purchasing or you just purchased your Garmin uh, live scope and you've got the, either the 34 or the 32, you will need to get a zero degree mount for your Garmin. It's gonna come with different mounts that are designed to kick out just a little bit. I think they've got like a seven degree kick out or a nine degree kick out or whatever it is, but their mounts that it's gonna come with is designed to be able to angle around trolling motors. And you don't want that since there's not gonna be a trolling motor at the end of your pole, you need a zero degree mount. I actually picked this up on Amazon. That It wasn't very expensive. You would think Garmin would put it with it, but they didn't but I'll link this Amazon link in the video description below too if you need this. But this is just gonna mount here, our uh, transducer amount to it. And the way the wire runs, the wire doesn't run through the pole, which at first I was like, man, it would look a whole lot cleaner if it ran through the pole. But then I started thinking that if I am switching this from boat to boat, I would rather it not run through the pole and run up the side of the pole, which is how it is, and it's, it's how they've designed it. And they come with these little clips and these clips, I, well, I dropped one, let me just grab this one. The clips are 3D printed, and you'll get to see it up close in just a minute, but they're designed to, they encase the, the wire against the outside of the pole, you push it on and click it, and then they've got a little back and two screws that you tighten down, and it keeps the wire loose in there because Garmin and, you know, Lawrence, Humminbird, they all tell you do not use zip ties on these transducer wires. Uh, it can damage them and you definitely don't want to go pinching and damaging the wire on a $2,000 transducer that you've got hanging off the side of your boat. So they thought ahead over at Sea Light and they put this together so that you can easily keep track of your wire, keep it in a straight line and nice and neat without damaging your wire. So I thought that was really cool. I got three of those to go with it and you can buy extra of these on their website too. I'm gonna have this link below with the promo code KayakUSA. So if you're interested in buying this, I highly recommend you go check these guys out. This thing is solid and I can't wait to get it out on the water and test it. But for now, I'm gonna drill four holes really quick in the floor of my boat, mount this plate and throw it on here really quick and I'll catch back up with you in just a minute and I'll show you how this thing actually works. All right, so that had to be the easiest install that I think I have ever done. I drilled four holes and put in four screws and that's it. Everything else besides, you know, mounting the transducer to the pole, which that's, you know, very simple too, but it's installed. And before I, I'm going to walk you guys around with the camera in just a minute, before I do that, I kind of want to show you how I plan to use it. And another way that I figured that I would be able to stow this while I'm running down the highway or running up the river uh, on the boat. So there's a couple of different ways you can spin it around like this and you can loosen this knob. They got a really nice knob right here that you can loosen. And what it does is it gets it so you can actually fold this down on this side. And what I plan on doing, once you get it folded where you want it, you lock it back down. And I plan on grabbing my little boat buckles here, my rod buckles, pull them over, and then that'll secure it even better. You know, it's already locked down. You just go around and lock all your, all your bolts down so it doesn't have all that, that twisting ability to it. And it's kind of locked in place. Now you can run down the river, you can go down the highway. This will probably be how it goes, you know, whenever I take it to the water. Or I realized there's another way that I could do this too. So I could keep this kind of in the position you keep it in kind of, let's see, like, say like this right here. I could actually loosen this back knob and just pull the pole out of the clamping system. So you loosen this knob up and you can actually just pull the pole out. So now the pole is detached completely from the little pivot arm. Then I could just lock the pivot arm out of the way and I could just simply lay this flat on the deck and then strap it down with the rest of my buckles. I mean, you know, my rods up under the, the rod buckle there and just have it locked down to the 
bow of the boat. That's just another way that I found, you know, as I was doing this install that I could do. But let me pop it back together for you really quick. So I believe that's how I had it ran. So this goes in here and then we'll clamp it down. And these knobs are really big there. I like how I like how they're big and they fit the palm of your hand so you don't have these little bitty, you know, screws or these little bitty knobs to turn. They're nice and big so you can get some good torque on it to lock it in place where you want it. That you keep locked into place. Let's say I get to where I'm fishing. This will literally just spin around off the side of the boat. Now, I'll be seated in the boat, of course. And then you loosen this knob on the back and you can pivot this straight up and down. When you get it vertical, how you want it, you lock it back into place. And then there's another knob right here. You loosen it just a little bit. It don't have to be much. And you can dial it in and kind of get this in line with where your seat is or you know wherever you have this mounted on your boat. I did mount mine pretty far forward because I had, to, I had a rod locker here that I had to work around but it still should be fine. I've already climbed up in there and you'll see, I'm gonna hop up here in just a minute and show you how I've got it. Uh, this little knob right here, you loosen it after you get this blocked where you want it, which we'll say right in there is pretty good. So you lock that knob. Now the pivoting right here is locked into place. Now all you wanna be able to do is turn this. So you loosen up this little knob right here. It gives you the full ability to kind of snug it so if you're in some current and you don't want the transducer accidentally moving by itself, you can snug it just a little bit and have it so you can bump this thing and kind of quickly set it where you want it and uh, so it don't free spin, I guess. But if you want it to free spin, you just loosen it and then you got the ability to quickly grab it and spin it around and uh, put it where you want it. But how cool is that? Let me climb up in here. Oh, one more thing. So if you want to adjust the height right now, I'm pretty deep in the water. I may bring it up a little bit. I, I'm gonna get it in the water actually to figure out where I wanna set this, but they've got this little collar right here. You loosen up the set screw on this collar, it slides up and down this shaft and you can literally just find your sweet spot, set the collar there. Sorry for the traffic. I got the garage doors open for light, but you slide this shaft up and down till you find your depth that you're happy with. You slide the collar down put it where you want it, and then you are good to go. Now you can sit up there all day long and dial this in, find the fish. Your spot lock can be sitting here, moving, doing its thing. You don't have to worry about your transducer going all over the place like I've been having to deal with lately. I can sit in one spot, aim at my crappie, and be good to go. When I'm ready to ride, or if I wanna just quickly change locations, my plan will probably be to turn this handle and lock it in a, straight up and down position, turn this knob back here on the back, click this up and lock it back down. And it's locked in position right there. These have little teeth and gears. So once you tighten this up, it can't slip and spin around on you. So I can literally just tighten these knobs up and run down the river just like this with no issues at all. That way, when I get to my spot, I just reach down here, turn this knob, lock it back down, up and down where I want it and then be ready to do some fishing. I don't have a tall ceiling in my garage, so I'm not gonna raise my seat up, but here's how it's eventually gonna be for me. And I'm gonna take it out this weekend, hopefully get some footage for y'all and do some crappie fishing. You'll get to see this again, but I should have it set in a pretty good spot where I can see my graph, I can operate my foot pedal, and all I gotta do is reach over here. See, I got a little snug. Loosen that up so I can just bump it and turn it around. You want to line your transducer up so that this handle is basically your straight line arrow. So your transducer needs to be facing forward. And they tell you, you can go on their uh, website and they'll show you exactly how you need to orient your transducer, whether the port side or the starboard side of the pole, however you end up doing it. And just like that. And then when I'm ready to rock and roll down the river, I should be able to lock it like this. Turn this a little bit. And if I want to spin it all the way around and get it out of the way, I can just do this and then lock it into place wherever I want it. So here's how it looks mounted in my floor. Like I said, this plate is the only thing bolted to my boat. And this slid in 
just like a little T-track. It's just basically a, an oversized T-track. This slid into there, and it's even got these little locking tabs that you spin, and it locks it into the floor. You got one on each side. Once you get it in a position, you can lock it down. Here's your main knob back here. This knob is the one you turn to be able to loosen up this shaft so that you can pivot the whole arm, or you can fold it up and down. It's gonna, I'm not gonna be able to do much of this with one hand holding a camera, but I can show you a little bit. Here's the knob here. This little knob right here, you loosen it, and this is what allows you to be able to spin the whole unit like this on your boat. So when you get to where you're going, we're gonna spin her out. We'll try to do this with one hand. When you get it where it's going or where you want it, you lock it into position here. I'm gonna try to do this without tearing something up. Let's see, I'm gonna turn this and get it just to where I can turn this outside one. Oh, there we go. Get that straight up and down. Let's lock this back in place. How nice is that? And then you got your little set screw here. This is the one I was talking about. You turn this to be able to freely spin your handle, or if you want it a little bit tighter, you can snug it a little so that you can just bump it and it holds its place pretty well. Here's the collar I mentioned. You loosen this collar and you can go up and down. Let's see if I loosen this, I can show you. The shaft slides in here. When you clamp to it, you're actually clamping, you're not clamping to the bar itself, you're clamping to this, this uh, sleeve that's around the bar so that you got that free play. And here's their retaining clips. See how it doesn't pinch your wire at all. I can actually pull this wire up and down so it's got free play. It's not in any danger at all of pinching your wire. I got three of them. They just clip on. They clip pretty good without the screws, but then they got these screws in this little backer that you screw on. And I put two of those on there. And here's my transducer. I mounted it on the port side. So this is how you set it up on the port side. I got it clicked back here, so it's throwing my, my beam in front of me. And if I want to quickly go, under, if I'm sitting on top of a brush pile and I want to quickly change it to down view, I just loosen my knob here, click it one click forward, and then I got my down view of whatever I'm fishing for. I think my favorite part of this setup is gonna be the versatility so that I can go from boat to boat using my live scope. I ain't balling like that, guys. I can only afford, I couldn't really afford this live scope when I bought it, so I definitely can't afford a separate live scope for each of my boats. So <laughs> I, I definitely wanted to figure out the best way to go from boat to boat. I think this, fix the issue of how I'm gonna go transducer from boat to boat. Now I'm working on how to get the black box from boat to boat, making it kind of portable so that I can quickly plug it into power on this boat and then quickly plug it into power on the kayak and in the new boat that we're fixing to be building. And I just wanted to figure that out. And this is the first step to that. And I think it's gonna work well. If you guys know of any ways or you've seen people make those black boxes portable, uh, let me know, uh, hit me up in the comments, let me know below this video. I'd love to see some of your guys' ideas. Y'all usually come up with some really cool stuff that I can integrate into my builds on the channel. So y'all help me out there. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it right now. I've got it right now where the black box is just mounted into one of my dry boxes here on the nitro. But like I said, I, I want it to be into a watertight safe place with a plug so I can just plug it up from boat to boat. This is the first step though. The transducer, I think this will work on every boat that I move it to. And all I've got to do is mount these little T-track plates on each of the boats. So I buy me a couple extra of these, put them on the other boats and I'm good to go swapping it around. I'm going to be trying this out this coming weekend. We're going on a trip. I want to do some crappie fishing, maybe do another catch and cook. So y'all stay tuned for that. But I'll be testing this out and letting you guys know how I like it. The main thing I like about this thing is that there's nothing that can really go wrong with it. I know that there's other ways to mount transducers, you know, the DIY ways, and even the electronic ways where you got your separate foot pedal to, to turn it. Those are really cool, but like I said, they're also pretty expensive, and, and I just I ain't balling like that, y'all. So this is a very cheap and very practical way to do it to where it's all manual. You don't have to worry about anything going bad. As long as you don't mess up installing it or drop it off your boat, it's, it's good to go. And if you did drop it off your boat, I think it would survive. This is pretty heavy duty aluminum, guys. I, I like it a lot. So make sure if you're interested in getting this, you use my promo code KAYAKUSA, all one word, at checkout. It'll save you 10% if you order one of these guys for your boat. And y'all stay tuned. This is gonna be a pretty fun setup. I'm 
I'm still, I'm kind of done with the nitro, but I did get this in and I wanted to share it with you guys so maybe help some of you guys out. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, go to my homepage. I got a lot of DIY videos like this, a bunch of cool little adventures, different builds. I've got a really cool project sitting in the backyard right now. After we're done with Trailer Swift, we're gonna move on to it and it's gonna be a full series, kind of like Trailer Swift was, where we're gonna pull something new in here. Not new, very, very old, but we're gonna restore it, build it out really cool here on the channel. So y'all stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you're new, especially if you wanna see some cool builds where we just bring something back to life. I, I really enjoy doing that kind of stuff. So we're fixing, we're gonna do another one as soon as we're done with Trailer Swift. I'm gonna quit talking now and end this video. I appreciate you guys watching. I upload every Monday at 6 p.m. So y'all come back next week, check out the new video. Peace.